Right, we welcome you back to America Talks Live. And remember, you can offer your viewpoint, not so much in a monologue, but in a conversation at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. We continue now with attorney and New York Times bestselling author Mark Smith. Mark, of course, senior fellow in law and public policy at the King's College. Uh, Mark, our old buddy uh, Jeff Sessions, the senator from Alabama, the guy who's been guts up on the border and on illegal immigration, appeared on Breitbart News Daily on Sirius XM Radio. He says the WikiLeaks leak really is the smoking gun for Hillary Clinton, especially the revelation that it is her dream to have open borders. Let's listen to what he said. It's the smoking gun. Um uh, Matt, um, I, years ago, it, it finally dawned on me, and I used to say and still do, the Democrats and liberals will pass any immigration bill as long as it doesn't work. What, what does that mean? It means they've never wanted a lawful system of immigration. Yeah, it seems that uh, when Hillary says it's her dream to have open borders, when you take a look at where the left has gone in terms of attracting new voters, it's not the old traditional get out the vote. It's to bring in a new vote. And you see what's going on in California where Jerry Brown has basically made it even more possible for non-citizens to vote. That's really what's going on here, is it not? Yeah, I don't think there's any debate, J.D., that the Democrats have been playing the long game for many decades, trying to essentially change the electorate of the United States into, into individuals that are much more uh, forgiving of government programs and government dependency. And I think that's been their strategy all along. And that's why uh, the Democrats have always wanted uh, this very robust, uh, basically unlimited immigration with no vetting of candidates, uh, of no, you know, no, no vetting of people to come into the country. This is why Hillary Clinton has expressed the desire to increase the number of Syrian refugees by almost 600 percent as soon as she gets into office. Uh, because, you know, Hillary Clinton's reference to open borders to me is not a smoking gun. It's just a reaffirmation of Democratic policy going back to Ted Kennedy in the 1960s. They want to import the entire third world to the United States, and they've been doing it. Let's go back to the phones at 1-877-NEWSMAX to Syracuse, New York for Beverly. And Bev, I understand you really want to talk about the White House warning to Mr. Trump about uh, Michelle Obama. Yeah, she... Uh stated that she saw no problem in having Beyonce as a role model for her children. So what's the big deal about Trump hugging and kissing? Uh, numerous people hug and kiss other people. Italians are known to grab someone and hug and kiss them when they see them. Uh, what's the big deal? Well, uh, obviously, you're pointing out the hypocrisy as the Obamas and Mrs. Obama especially champions hip-hop and the explicit lyrics often involved in the music therein. Bev, we appreciate the call and uh, want to thank you very much. At this juncture, let's uh, welcome in another guest because there's another story percolating out there that we need to, uh, to get uh, a good discussion going on. Uh, Russia and the threats of what Vladimir Putin may have in mind. Joining us now in the conversation, former investigative journalist and GOP Trust Executive Director Scott Wheeler. Scott, it's good to have you here along with Mark. And let's just go to this WikiLeaks uh, situation where the Clinton campaign is actually tied to Russia. The email hack in yesterday's document dump indicates that the Clinton campaign chairman, John Podesta, owned 75,000 shares in an energy company connected to Vladimir Putin. Of course, Podesta transferred those shares to an anonymous holding company after he joined the Obama administration. Now, this is very curious because Trump has been the guy that the left all claims has to have tie with Russia. Is this just a classic case of the left projecting its own behavior onto their political opponents? I think it's worse than that. I think it's using very uh, uh, sleazy psychological warfare tactics in this election by trying to tie Trump, who's never met Putin, uh, to Trump and suggest that we have this new Cold War taking place and that Trump is a traitor. In fact, the Democrats were using that word <clears throat> during the convention to suggest that Trump may be a traitor for inviting Putin to uh, to release Hillary Clinton's emails. The reality is, 
uh, as my Forbes article uh, that came out today says, even if Trump was Putin's best friend, he could not give Russia and Putin any more than Obama and Clinton already have, including they pulled missile, anti-missile, ballistic missile sites out of Poland and the Czech Republic uh, at the behest of Putin in 2009. 2010, we captured, our FBI captured 10 Russian spies involved in a sleeper cell, and they immediately turned them over to a hero's welcome in Moscow, and then the Clinton State Department bragged to, uh, uh, off the record to the press corps about how, um, what a great victory this was for us somehow, that we turned over their spies. You had the New START Treaty and the lame, that they pushed through in the lame duck period of the 2010 Senate that Russia wanted done, and they said they wanted no language changed in it, and, the, and Obama and Clinton complied dutifully that same so they're treaty. So just that, like they're basically taking orders from the Russians, even while deriding <laughs> those of us who raised the concerns. Gents, I, I got to bring in a phone call because, after all, the name of the program is America Talks Live to Cleveland, Ohio for Ron, and Ron wants to again address a story that's really touched a nerve. That is the White House telling Donald Trump, don't you dare say anything about Michelle Obama. Your take on that, Ron? Uh, yes, thanks for taking my call, J.D. You bet. Uh, I, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, right. as they said. I would just like to know uh, who does this man from Kenya think he is telling us that we can't comment on what his wife spews out about Donald Trump? You well, know, he was at, in Cleveland today, and I just want to let you know, when Trump was here, the crowd was 10 times the size of what that Tony crowd that was there that didn't even cause a traffic jam this morning. How about that? Well, I appreciate that, Ron, your perspective on what's going on in Cleveland. And again, guys, and Mark, I'll bring you in on this. I think the White House is trying to goad Trump into going after Michelle. Do you think there's something to that argument? I Absolutely. think that anything that the Democrats can do to persuade Donald Trump not to talk about the issues that matter to, to voters, immigration, trade, uh, the wall, uh, the economy, I think is a good day for the Democrats. And they're trying to get him off topic. But I don't think it's going to work because I think that the campaign of Donald Trump's and the staff are sensitive to what's going on. And I don't think they'll be goaded. But I want to add on to Scott's point, who I thought made a great point, that the best friend to the Russians is the Obama administration, because keep in mind that the Russian economy is really a gas station. If the oil prices go up, it's good for the Russians. If oil prices collapse, it's horrible for the Russians. Yeah, the and only the problem is, though, it's a, it's a nuclear-run gas station, and this is what I want to get back to Scott on in the minute 30 that remains. These curious pronouncements and orders coming out of Russia where they're calling back students studying abroad, bringing back diplomats. The, the, the betting is that Putin is posturing as if a new world war is going to begin. So let me ask you, Scott, is this saber rattling or are they getting ready to have Mr. Obama make another huge concession on the eve of these elections? About 45 seconds, Scott. I think maybe what they're setting up is a... a uh, possibility for Obama to look strong on national security, to stand up to Putin for the first time in eight years. And that may be to, in order to help Clinton. We saw the bombing in Yemen. Uh, we, we've seen some retaliatory action from the U.S. military, and that's to make it look like the Obama administration is actually doing something. So their endorsement of Hillary as being a competent uh, person on foreign policy and national security uh, has some resonance. Uh, the reality is that we've seen what they've done over uh, going back to the first Clinton administration. They sold national security secrets to communist China, and that uh, technology has proliferated the world and even to the third world. Well, you know, it's an intriguing point you bring up, and I'm sorry the time catches us. The, the fact that these neo Soviets like Putin might be running a sting to help Obama look stronger. Interesting thoughts. Gentlemen, we thank you. Back with more right after this.